please, for whatever reason. Yeah, well, Mitzi was in grammar school, and um, I think she was in the fourth grade. And uh, she had been there for a year or two and having, you know, a, uh, a pleasant time. She had friends, you know. She's a nice girl. They, and suddenly you know, she was uh, ostracized and uh, shunned. Uh, and the same thing, uh, not only by children, but by teachers. My mother, who had been part of the PTA and the, 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 an organization called the Bluebirds, was uh, and had been solicited, you know, to you know to to act, you know, to be active in both organizations, was suddenly shunned, um, and this was a you know, all a political repercussion. Someone, you know, had decided to object, you know, to Dalton Trumbo, and uh, in one way or another, that devolved upon the family, not not to him, to uh, to because he's unavailable. But Mitzi suffered, you know, from really not kind of understanding what it was that was happening, because she had been too young during the period of the initial blacklist, and other things that you know that had gone on, for instance, in Mexico or in other places, to to really understand why what was happening to her was happening to her. Well, what happens is that wherever you, wherever you are, at some point, somebody decide, discovers. You know that you know Dalton Trumbo is Dalton Trumbo. Now some people may have known all along and not cared, which is you know generally that's what happens. Nobody really you know cares much. However, every what you need and what they will they come up with is an in, a person who is outraged by the the fact that Dalton Trumbo lives in the neighborhood, and two that his daughter actually goes to school, you know, with their children, and you know on and on. But that can, that can happen, at, you know, at any point, uh, and it can happen, you know, uh, you know, one year, and then happen four years later, as if it, you know, had happened, you know, as if it were, you know, a brand new thing. It's just another bigot. <laughs> so, Carl Foreman, who had written High Noon uh, and was a, a black writer, uh, had found a way to get himself unblacklisted without informing. Well, this was this was good news for for everybody, and uh, so the question was, how did this actually happen? Well, how'd you do it, Carl? Is kind of the question. So there was a meeting at Mike Wilson's house uh, in the Valley, um, in Studio City, I believe, is where they lived at the time, uh, where uh, you know, twenty or thirty blacklisted people all gathered, you know, to hear Carl tell the story of how he managed to. To get on blacklisted and what the situation was, because everybody is interested. Uh, I end up driving my father because I now have a learner's permit, and I'm 15, you know, 15 and a half. You get the learner's permit, and I have a, a reasonable adult with me, and so I drive him to the to the meeting, and we, you know, we, I meet the Wilsons for the first time actually, and several other people who I've never met before. And uh, the next, uh, until seven o'clock the next morning, people are discussing everything that has to do with the blacklist in terms of Carl's, you know, Carl's uh, accomplishment, which uh, apparently turned out to be something that only he could do. This, <laughs> this process couldn't be duplicated for some reason. Uh, this arise, uh, arose <laughs> with this. Came a lot of suspicion from some people as to, well, you know, come on, you know, you're holding back. You did inform, or you know, you you made this deal. How could you make this deal? And you know, and other people couldn't have it. And uh, in one way or another, the the blacklist uh, group broke down into you know, kind of two segments: those who believed Carl and those who didn't believe Carl. Uh, my father tended to be in the group that uh, believed Carl, was perfectly willing to accept that as what it was, uh, because he didn't see the, you know, an alternative. Not believing him doesn't further anything. Believing him, you know, it actually holds out some glimmer of, tr uh, you know, of hope that maybe, you know, this is a, maybe this is a chink in the blacklist that Carl has managed to accomplish, even though it can't be duplicated. 
but there was a, a great deal of division at the time on uh, on what the, the ways that people ought to respond to the blacklist, the uh, you know the strategies that you know that blacklisted people were trying to develop, whether it be legal or other. Um, so it was a complicated uh, time. Uh, my mother, of course, and we had forgotten to call her, so uh, she, <laughs> her son, <laughs> and her husband, you know, come limping home at about seven thirty or eight in the morning, and she had no idea of where we were, except at the Wilsons. I mean, the, you know, any he, meeting he, that occurred after six, six o'clock meant that he had a drink in his hand, so he wasn't going to drive and <laughs> you know and and drink at the same time. So. He needed, you know, someone to you know, to do he that. Designated. Problem. Yeah, absolutely. His explanation was that his lawyer, who's uh, who's name I can't remember, a well-known uh, uh, liberal lawyer. I think he also made a couple other deals. But he was, you know, he was a well-known, uh, well-connected lawyer, not the kind of lawyer who normally represented, you know, the blacklisted people. And that it was the the kind that uh, for Carl, because he was so particularly valuable, you know, to Columbia Studios or whichever studio it was, they were willing to forego, you know, him having to publicly, you know, acknowledge that he had been a communist and he's not now, and that he regrets having ever held, you know, any idea other than. Uh, John Wayne approves of, whatever it might be. The, uh, so the process, the process of getting your name back, of being able to, uh, to write or direct under your own name, was uh, extended to him, presumably because he had something that the studio needed particularly. Others didn't qualify for that, or at least didn't qualify yet. And Carl uh, moved to England, where he set up shop and started making uh, writing and uh, eventually producing and directing in in England. Now this was, I'm sure he wanted he wanted to explain himself, you know, mm -hmm. and explain the circumstances, uh, because otherwise it would appear that he had uh, made a deal with the committee. Right. And his position, well, I didn't make a deal with the committee. I my lawyer made a deal with the studio. Which you know, in a sense, wants me enough so that I don't have to deal with the committee. In doing, in doing, in making his deal, what he is doing is he, is, you know, he still acknowledges. In, a, in in the purest sense, he acknowledges that the blacklist exists and that he's just, he's making an end run around it. Breaking the blacklist, uh, you, know, uh, you know, as distinct from that, is saying. The blacklist is wrong, the committee is wrong, the studios are wrong, and the academy is wrong. And I'm not going to acquiesce in any way with whatever you want. That's, you know, that's, that's the difference <clears throat> that, you know, that, that occurs um, between break, uh, breaking and, and, and finding a way around. He's still operating within that system. Now, Carl doesn't like the blacklist, but he's got a way to, you know, to, uh, to get out uh, without, without informing and without repudiating you know, his, you know, his past. So that's what, that's, that, was, that, was, that was his deal, not available to others. <clears throat> but as the blacklist goes on, there are various deals of you know, different people can make at different times. Uh, the Trumbo, you know, uh, accomplishment is by saying is essentially saying I won't do any of these things, and that the the studios eventually uh, cave into that. Well, one that you would appear before the committee, that the committee and you know and uh, name other people and uh, name other people as members of the Communist Party. Admit that you had been a member of the Communist Party. Uh, the second, uh, generally at that point, you know, they also at one point required that you then, in a sense, do acts of penance, like uh, you would write a, a movie script uh, that, uh, um, in one way or another, uh, 
revealed the Communist Party to be, you know, filled with with bad characters and who were trying to steal the atom bomb and uh, good Americans prevent uh, prevent this and other excesses. So there were, you, in other words, you had, or you might write an article for a magazine about how I mistakenly joined the Communist Party, you know, what a bad place it is, and how I am now uh, a free man. That kind of thing. So that uh, to repudiate your past was something my father wasn't going to do. And he wasn't going to allow a congressional committee to tell him that he had to appear before it and, you know, uh, and effectively tell them on demand what his politics are in order to get a job. That's all. So <laughs> it, was, it was kind of simple for him. Everything for him, you know, become, it comes down to some very simple attitudes and some very simple beliefs. And he just doesn't stray from those. That way he's able to keep everything in line, by the way. That's why he, you, you don't find him contradicting himself in, in, any, real me in any meaningful ways. It's because it, you know, it all follows a, sort of, you know, a line, which goes back to his ideas about the First Amendment, freedom, what it is, what, you know, the way a man operates in society. So all of that you know, helps him. You know, as, as he develops. When Larry Supplier was writing his book, which I think is really good, mm -hmm. um, and he writes about it in the book, overcoming the, uh, the kind of the wall of silence. That mm -hmm. uh, what people, you know, not, not revealing their secrets or not mm -hmm. revealing their past or not revealing membership. Uh, making and making uh, making his task as an historian you know, much more difficult than it might have been. So and it was trying to over, you know, succeeding some places with some people, uh, but you know, others just are not you know, are sticking to uh, to a point that is already that was made and no longer needs to be maintained.